Hi, I'm Megan Kresge, and uh, I started this garden in 2006. It's called Gather Round Farm. So, yeah, we started in 2006 with it just being a parking lot, and um, we, the city of Cleveland uh, will dump wood chips for free because they trim trees and need somewhere to put the wood chips. So we had wood chips dumped at about two feet over the asphalt as a base layer, and then we started collecting compost from the local West Side Market, where they throw a lot, a lot of uh, old produce away that they can't sell. Uh, and um, basically, have been working on creating our own soil uh, for the last four years. We've been able to plant it uh, for two years with vegetables and herbs, and we have some gooseberries. And uh, we'd like to move towards a permaculture model of planting perennials, that, uh, like small fruit trees, um, you know, with a, a canopy layer, a climbing layer, an herb layer, and a root layer. But to, before that, we have to get our soil base really established. Um, and we got these chickens as part of the system to use, uh, well, for friendship <laughs> and for their manure as excellent fertilizer. And uh, we, we sell the eggs on an uh, honor system on my street. And uh, we're moving towards uh, an educational program where we hope to have more educational programs here for children and adults. So I think our, our goal is just to have this space be used as a garden space and, and uh, educational space that the neighborhood can enjoy and learn something from about local food. So what would you say the biggest challenge, you know, that is present or exists in, in trying to create this urban garden or farm environment? Well, uh... One of the challenges just for this specific project is because it's completely raised bed, there's no soil underneath, we just built it over the asphalt, uh, is basically getting enough of a soil base built up. Because um, it will, with or organic matter, will, will break down into small bits of soil. So um, that's just an ongoing process. Uh, and then being in the city, um, there's city regulations that have been challenging about, uh, you know, getting permits for building the chicken coop, uh, for having chickens. Um, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of support actually uh, for it. Like people come here and they enjoy how it looks, and you know, they feel, you know, just today somebody said it's sort of like a little bit of the country in the city. And um, but at the same time, there's people that are not used to uh, where food comes from and how it's grown and don't really want to be near that kind of a situation. And it bothers me to know that that the, like the people in our society are used to eating food from fast food restaurants and, and buying it from stores and that so that as we try to move towards local food again it, it'll make it more difficult for those that are growing it to, to get past the hurdles of ignorance basically and, um, well also just knowing that people are fairly malnourished because of not getting enough nutrients from the food that they're eating especially children and, yeah I mean it's, uh, I've seen other other cultures where people are eating healthy local food and um, I think it definitely makes a difference in people's feeling and their physical well-being and why would you suppose that a child would be less afraid of a gunshot than they would be a farm animal? A gunshot might be more familiar than a farm animal, and maybe they've heard stories about a farm animal. Like, there's different things, you know, children might be afraid that uh, a chicken might attack them, whereas if an adult might be afraid that they're going to get bird flu uh, because they haven't read about what, you know, the real... Uh, what bird flu is and how it's spread and all that. Um, so the media, for example, the hype about swine flu right now, people might translate that into 
all farm animals and be afraid.